it's um, it's been some time since I uh, did a video showing how I make my little mosaic pins. Um, I I did have a couple of videos on the channel, and I think I've taken them down now because my my processes have changed so much over the years that I do it completely differently now to how I used to do it. So this is a revised video on this subject. Uh, I, I think this is possibly the best way to make the pins now. Uh, and the pins that I do, uh, I do two different types. I, I do the, uh, the the three innard or the trinity pin as I call it, and the um, and the quad pin with with four small inners. Um, there's one problem that I have. Uh, is that the tubing that fits in the pins is the wrong diameter. Um, so, for example, I've got four inner tubes that I'll put within the one big outer tube. And on this wall thickness of tube, I, I use two different wall thicknesses of tubes depending on what pin I want to make. If I want to make the quad pin, then I've got to use a thin walled tube. And if I want to make the Trinity pin, I've got to use a thicker walled tube. So there's, there's, there's three pins in, but it's far too loose for, uh, to be used as a, as a Trinity pin, because it's a thin walled tube. But if I try and push the fourth one in, it just won't go. So, what I've got to do is reduce the diameter of these small tubes and um, get them to fit. This is one that I've been working on this morning. Uh, this one's got the four inners and they're a snug fit now. Uh, so there you go, there's the four inners. And I've reduced the diameter of these uh, inner tubes so that, that so that they'll fit snugly within the uh, thin walled outer tube, uh, which is um, six point three five mil outside dia external diameter. Uh, so that's the first um, the first task, uh, reducing the diameter of the uh, the inner tubes. So I'll show you how I do that now. Well I've mounted my inner thin tubing uh, into the chuck of the drill. I've mounted the drill in a vise, uh, just gently clamped uh, in a vise so it's not to damage the drill but just to hold it steady. And uh, the best way i found to reduce the diameters is to get, this is a piece of uh, old worn out 36 grit um, abrasive belt. And then two pieces of wood, uh, this is hard desert ironwood, some blank offcuts that I've had. And um, I've left the, the saw tooth marks where I, I ripped the, the, the stock down and it's quite rough. Uh, and that just that helps um, the um, back of the abrasive to sort of stay in place really. And then form this type of uh, scissor action, clamp it over the, uh, the piece of stock that I want to reduce in diameter, uh, start the drill up and I move it backwards and forwards a number of times. I found about sort of four or five times backwards and forwards uh, is enough to reduce the diameter to the uh, level that I want so that it will fit within the bigger tubes. So I'll do that now. Also inside there, I don't know if the camera's showing it, you can see the, uh, 
the dust that's uh, been taken off of the, um, the piece of stock there. Now this has left this extremely coarse and I noticed with some of my pins when I was assembling the knife I come to finish the knife and I'd uh, find a little bit of a roughness or a little fleck of, uh, of brass uh, which had come off of the, um, the burrs that had been formed on there. Uh, and so to alleviate that I now finish that down to a 280 to smooth it down. That feels a lot smoother and there's no burrs. Well, that's the last pin I've uh, reduced the diameter. Let's see if it fits. Absolutely spot on. So there's uh, four inners in one outer. Next task now is to uh, cut the tubes to size because that's just too long to be able to uh, get the epoxy uh, to flow all the way along there and so I cut them down to uh, certain lengths and then um, get them ready for uh, the gluing up process. That's the pins all uh, deburred now, and um, I need to just uh, wipe down all the internals with acetone, uh, assemble the pins, and then uh, use the compressed air line to um, to blow out any of the uh, any debris, uh, and then um, it's a matter then of introducing the. Uh, the epoxy. So that's the next stage. I've passed a couple of pieces of uh, kitchen towel, uh, soaked, in, soaked in acetone through the bores of these uh, tubes. You see the dirt that's picked up. So now we're uh, ready to assemble these pins, get them all lined up and then introduce the epoxy. A quick final flush out. Last with uh, airline through each one. This part of the process is a little bit messy. I spilt some of the, uh, the powder paint that I use. I, I use a powder paint to thicken and uh, colour the epoxy. And um, the analogy also is I think it makes it, it's a bit like cement. It makes the, uh, 
the bond uh, stronger. Um, the analogy is cement, I've mentioned it just now, and what I mean by that is that if you just were to mix up cement and water, uh, you wouldn't have a very strong mix. You need an aggregate in the mix. And um, this is what the powder paint does. Not only does it, it darken darken the, the, uh, the epoxy, which you're going to uh, install within the, the pins, but it, it strengthens it. It gives it some body, it makes it stronger. Can add just a little bit more into that. You don't want to add too much. If you get it too thick, then you'll have a job getting it into the the pin. So I'll mix that up now, and I'll let it sit for a bit. Let the bubbles come to the surface, and then we'll um, get the epoxy into the pin. Right, the mode of operation. I've got me my, uh, my mosaic pin, a shorter tube. On the end I'm going to dunk into the epoxy. The longer tube goes to a vacuum pump. I've already got one Blue Peter fashion ready to go. Stick the short end into the epoxy. Uh, pull a vacuum using this uh, hand pump and then I'll see the, uh, the epoxy show in the uh, upper tube. Uh, and when it does, I release the vacuum, and then I can. There's a little button on the bottom of the uh, pump here. You release the vacuum, then I can pull the the, uh, the the tube off of the pump. But to get the epoxy to flow, I pre-warm it, pre-warm the tube, turn it on first. That always helps. Pre-warm the tube, and uh, it'll be easier to get the epoxy. To flow, flow through the tube. So now just dunk the tube in there and start pulling the vacuum. I can just now start to see the epoxy flowing up here. So I'm pretty sure I've got the tube now full. So release the vacuum. Pull the tube out of the uh, the epoxy. I'll give it a bit of a quick clean up. Because this little uh, tube on the end is also full of um, full of epoxy. And then what I then do, I just flip it over like that, fold it over, get a zip tie. Falling out, very messy job, very messy job. So there's a pin full of resin, and then that will be ready to go into the uh, the pressure pot in a minute, because there could be tiny bubbles in there. The pressure pot then puts it under four bar, compresses it a little bit. Any bubbles, the the epoxy won't compress, but the bubbles of air trapped inside will. So it compresses the, the bubbles of air down to uh, a smaller size, almost invisible. And then um, you leave it for 24 hours for the epoxy to cure. The bubbles then can't expand and uh, your pin is finished and ready for installing in the knife. Well, there's my pressure pot. Uh, it's actually got a... Uh, container full of uh, wood and stabilising resin at the moment which is under pressure. I do leave the wood in there for a week generally. So I put my pins, just enough room enough for them to go in there down there. 
that's nice. Put the lid of the uh, pressure pot on and uh, give it four atmospheres. Check for leaks. No, no leaks. The compressor set on a regulator, so it will uh, keep the pressure pot topped up all the time. There is a very slow leak in this pressure pot. I think it comes from the safety valve. So that will slowly climb to four bars, which is the uh, safe working pressure of this pot, and then I'll leave them in there till tomorrow. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that in-depth look at how I now make my mosaic pins. Uh, just I'll show you how they look in the uh, the finished knives. This is a this is a wasp that I've built. I built a match set actually for a, uh, a very good friend of mine. Um, just got to clean these up before I send them out. Uh, there's a little uh, wasp. I don't know if I can if the camera will focus. You can see how the pins come out. In this case these are the Trinity pins and then the matching um, classic to go along with it there's the matching classic in its uh, wet moulded sheaf so again with that camera focus This is, uh, I didn't mention, I better mention now whilst I think about it, brass liners. Uh, fitted brass liners to these. They do add a little bit of weight to the knife even though I have drilled the liners out as much as possible. They do uh, make a very elegant knife I think. Quite happy with the, uh, the look of that. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope it's been of use and help to somebody. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.